I would like to participate in a CGC Signature Series event, but is it really worth the money? Hey there, today I have a CGC submission prep video for you. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the analysis I did to determine whether or not I was gonna participate in one of the upcoming CGC Signature Series events. Now, I have been internally critical of CGC and these signing events because it looks like they are creating events uh, multiple times a day. It's actually hard for me to keep up. Uh, to me, it also dilutes the kind of interest, I would say, uh, in these sorts of things. Uh, I, I understand you know, having more creators available uh, you don't have to participate in all of them, so it makes sense specifically for uh, the one I want to discuss with you today. So I'm not necessarily complaining about the amount of, of quantity of these events, but more so around the finances. And in recent videos that I've created with some of my uh, CGC unboxings of, of books that I've already purchased slabbed, I've targeted signature series submission books that are already slabbed and signed by creators that are on the current list of the events because if you're charging some amount for the signature, if you're submitting new books, but you're able to get that book in a 9.8 slab for around the same price as the signature and grading fee, then why not go ahead and just get one already slapped. Uh, the other reason is you can uh, view the, the scan or the photo of the item uh, and understand like the signature placement and does the signature placement matter. Uh, a lot of times <laughs> there'll be a character and the artist will sign like right across the neck or something like that or, in, in, or right across the face or on some particular specific piece of art and it sort of diminishes the overall I would say visual appeal and attraction of the book itself. Uh, there's some of these things that I worry about too when I'm sending books in is that even if I kind of identify this specific placement of the book, is the artist really going to respect my request and sign it appropriately? And there's a lot of additional worry and distress that I go through in order to submit a book uh, from creating the window bags, which I have a video on how I do that all the way through receiving the books back. And, you know, if you get that book back in a 9.4 sign, yeah, there's still some value and, and some joy in adding a signed book to your collection. But for those of us chasing the highest grade possible for some of these books, there's just a lot of additional stress that comes along with submitting books for grading, yes, but specifically for sending books in for the signature series submission, where there's a lot of additional care and effort that goes into sending books in, and on top of that, a lot of additional money. Now, the Signature Series event that I am currently interested in participating in is the upcoming Kevin Eastman signing. One of my regrets is that when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Last Ronin series came out a few years ago, back in 2020, CGC had a signing event specifically gathering the creators around Last Ronin, and a lot of folks participated in this and got some really cool like group signatures on a book with remarks and how they found all of the space on the book for all of that ink on the cover, I don't know, but there are some really, really cool examples out there of books that were signed as part of that event. Now, with this uh, upcoming event, that is going to take place towards the end of 2023. This is specifically just Kevin Eastman, and Kevin Eastman has two different options for this event. It is the straight signature option, and then there is a signature plus turtle head remark option, and each of those comes with a different price, $90 for the signature and $130 for the signature plus the turtle head remark. Now, I feel like I have to disclose this because I, I'm not talking about the enjoyment of the hobby in general. If you want to go ahead and get the co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to draw a turtle head on any of your comic books and you want CGC to verify the signature and slab that book for you and money is no object and you're not worried about value and all of that stuff, by all means, submit away. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, what I'm doing specifically is I have a number of Last Ronin 
and I want to say comic books, but they're really magazines because they have to be submitted through the magazine signature series submission because they are a bit oversized. And that was part of the problem, or not problem, part of the reason why I'm sending these books in is because they are tricky to store. So I'm not talking about or trying to offer advice for just the love of collecting signature slabs or artwork on comic books or comic book magazines or graphic novels. That's not what I'm talking about. I think that that advice is kind of generic. It's like, do what you want, do what you love, and all of that stuff. And that always applies. What I'm trying to do here is to figure out, is it worth spending the money to get these last Ronin magazine comic book graphic novel issues submitted with the price that CGC is charging versus what the value is in the marketplace. So this is not investment advice. This is not really analysis to figure out how much money can be made. It is more around, is it worth your time and money to submit your own books when you could potentially, if you want to collect these, just go out into the world and try to find these books at a reasonable price? Because a lot of times what happens is a couple of things. Number one, for the amount of money and time and effort that you're spending to package up a one of your prized possession, send them off to CGC, get that 9.8 with the signature in just the right color of ink and in the right placement and everything that comes along with that. And when you compare it to a slab that is already encased that has everything, there are many times where the price of the item versus the overall cost, and you do have to factor in things like time, stress, worry, shipping, uh, window bags, all of that stuff. You have to compare that and figure out, is it worth it, right? That's where I'm thinking, is it worth it financially? Yes, but is it worth it to sort of make sure that what you want is actually securable? So if there's a last Ronin number one signed by the four creators with a couple of remarks in a 9.8 and it's $300, and it would have taken you an overall cost of maybe $200, let's say, or $150 to $200, plus then sort of those intangibles that come along with it, is it then worth it to maybe spend an extra, say, $60 to $80 to just secure the item that you want in the look, the feel, the way that you absolutely want it specifically, like it's meeting all of your requirements, checking all the boxes, and that's the one that you want. Or are you going to gamble and send in your own book and hope that you can somehow recreate the magic of a, a slab that already has what you're looking for? So that's kind of the first example uh, in the first scenario that I'm thinking about. The second one is a lot of times people will blindly send in items to CGC for signature and they don't do the analysis that I've done, and they send in books that won't have the value in the secondary market. Um, I have a book behind me. I'll get out of the way and show you. This is World Tree number two. This is the one in 25, and it's signed by two creators, Fernando Blanco and James Tinney in the fourth. And I won this at auction for, I think, around let's just say after shipping, somewhere around $75. And that includes like $16 of shipping uh, plus some tax. So really when you're kind of looking at the, like the final auction win bid price, it was somewhere around $50 to $60. So you're talking about a one in 25, which if you're watching my weekly 650 videos, I'm, I'm getting a lot of, uh, let's say, feedback around what an incentive costs should it be $25 because it's a 1 in 25? Should it be $10, $15? Should the price matter? I'm always uh, happy to get into those discussions. But not to get sidetracked here, but you're just trying to think of what is the cost of this book? So you, you've somehow purchased a World Tree number 2, 1 in 25. It costs you some amount of money. And then you have to think about the signature series submission cost for the dual signature, which sometimes will run again, to be kind of on the low side, the conservative side, somewhere around 80 to $100 maybe for a dual signature. And then of course, all of the, the shipping back and forth and everything. So you could be in for this book for around, again, I'm just trying to be really conservative and not over exaggerate, but somewhere around $120 if you were able to uh, find this book 
in a 9.8 candidate, send it all the way through the process and get it back in your possession. Or you could just bid on it on eBay. And, and I'm explaining this in detail because this is that second scenario where is it worth it? Meaning, is this the right book to send in? Because not all books need to be slabbed in today's market. And I also believe not every book needs to be signed. I bought this because I love this cover. I love the series. I'm a huge fan of Tinian. So it's an example of collect what you love. But if I were to send in my additional copies and go through a signature series process, I know because I know what I paid for the one that was already slabbed that I would be losing money. I'm better off trying to track down more of these on eBay if for some reason I wanted to collect more and more of, of World Tree number two incentives that were signed. I'm happy with the one I have. I'm not planning on doing that, but hopefully you get the point is that you have to figure out like which books are the right books to send in. Now, what I wanna show you is a, a breakdown of the analysis that I did. And the point of the analysis is to figure out are the last Ronin books worth sending in for Eastman to sign these? Also, would it be worth it for him to add the turtle head remark to some of these, which is an additional $40 over the signature series submission cost? And then figure out, is that worth it? Because if I were to say, you know what, uh, especially in this one right here, there's a lot of space in the middle of the book where uh, a great Kevin Eastman sketch right there in the middle would look fantastic. But then when you look at the numbers, what you're paying for the remark and what the value of that book in the secondary market is, I don't know if it's worth adding the remark signature to it or not. Or would it look good to have just Kevin Eastman's signature alone right there in the snow? And that was the analysis that I, I compiled that I want to share with you. The first thing I want to do, it's, it's a little bit of an unboxing. I ordered specifically for this signing event. In the CGC store, they have window bags that you can already purchase. And I'm going to unbox those here very quickly and just show you what those look like. I'm going to put a Last Ronin magazine in that window bag. Normally, I would have created my own window bags, but with these being oversized, the CGC store specifically had window bags for these Last Ronin books. And I wanted to spend some extra money to get the window bags to ship these in to CGC, specifically made for these Last Ronin books. Again, that factors into the cost. Again, like there's a lot involved in sending a book in for a signature series submission. It's much easier just to do a quick 9.8 pre-screen, fill your shipment with 5, 10, 25 books, whatever you want, and send it off. This takes a little bit more care which includes the requirement of sending these books in with window bags. So I'm going to pause here, show you the unboxing of the window bags, and then we'll get into the analysis where I'll show you uh, the true values and costs of sending these books in to determine if ultimately it's worth it. Okay, so here is the box that was sent from CGC. This is from the CGC store. There's a lot of different uh, comic book submission supplies in the CGC store. I don't necessarily recommend or endorse any of these. It's just their kind of convenience. Most of those things that you, they sell in the store, you can either recreate at home or, you know, it's it's like if it'd be like a CGC submission kit with bubble wrap and things like that. You can get those things elsewhere. But what's nice is then it comes in a kit. It's everything you need to submit a book. And in this case, they've got these window bags. And I specifically wanted last Ronin sized window bags for this submission. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you what those look like. All right, here we go. These orange bags. Uh, I think they're orange. Typically, they're yellow because uh, CGC recognizes the orange, I think, as specifically uh, designed for Last Ronin or any oversized uh, comics or magazines that, that fit the, the same dimensions. So we'll take a look at one of these. And in the CGC store, these are specifically called Last Ronin bags. So it kind of has, has a flap here where you insert the magazine right through here. So yeah, you can see it, it's opened and then it sort of folds over here with this little extra piece that kind of secures the 
the book in place from sliding out. So let me go ahead and put uh, one of the books in. I grabbed this off of my shelf. This is uh, Last Ronin Issue 4, where I was saying that, you know, the remark might look good right here, but I don't know if Issue 4 will really hold up in terms of value if I were to spend the extra money for the remark. All right. Originally got this from Things From Another World with their horrendous sticker on the back. Let me get rid of that as that creates an indent on the other books. Um, so I think I like pre-screened these myself, but you can see like the, the corners on these are really, really pristine and sharp and feel like all of my last Ronin books have a really, really good chance of getting a 9.8. I'm probably putting a lot of fingerprints on the book right now, but here you can see how it's perfectly sized specifically for last Ronin. So you'll take the book and put it in very gently. Uh, again, think of all the handling of this of these books that you have to do. You're going to slide it into the window bag, grab this so that it doesn't catch the cover, because that will happen whether you're making your own window bags or not, and then it folds over. And then you've got this nice and secured window bag where Mr. Eastman can simply open up this, go ahead and sign it where he feels it's appropriate. I guess if you wanted it signed up here along the side, you're out of luck. Not that you have saying that you would, but uh, really nice and convenient. Uh, these are really, really sturdy. They're thicker than your typical like comic book or even magazine back and board. They're, they're just slightly thicker, so it adds a little bit more protection. And then uh, I think that my only concern is finding a backing board that is specifically going to secure this. And what I may end up doing is using my Silver Age uh, fullbacks. Um, it may not specifically cover the book edge to edge, but I feel like uh, it's better than nothing. And there's enough thickness on the side here where even if it doesn't completely cover the edge, uh, uh, all the edges of the book, I still would be comfortable sending those in. So again, thinking about all these additional costs, the window bags, the full bags, everything involved with sending them, I know it might just seem like it's a dollar here or a dollar there, but everything adds up very quickly. And you just ask yourself, uh, would I be better off just buying the slab outright with the signature and the remark already on it? Well, let's check out the numbers and we can decide for ourselves. Okay, uh, before I run the numbers, I just want to show you the announcement here. Uh, CGC welcomes back Kevin Eastman. This was posted uh, August 24th, 2023, uh, about two weeks ago. And like I said, these signature announcements, uh, they're coming in hot. So I, I definitely recommend, if you're interested in this, subscribing to the CGC newsletter. Uh, but also uh, pay extra attention to it, just because if there is a creator you're looking for, uh, you may miss it just because there are so many of these coming in, uh, literally multiple uh, signature series announcements a day. And one of the signature series perks or options in the case of Kevin Eastman is that they are offering this turtle head remark. Uh, so pretty cool original remark by Eastman available to add to your book, but of course added additional charge. So there's a lot of information uh, related to Eastman and his role as a co-creator of Turtles. And then we get into the details of the submission where all submissions for this event have to be received at the CGC headquarters in Sarasota, Florida by Friday, October 27th, 2023. So my goal is to get these books prepped right away and sent in so that they're there. Uh, now, for the interesting part, uh, we're interested here in the cost. Uh, the logistics, I think we've got that down, but what is this going to cost us? And it is $90 per item. Now, I will tell you this too. Uh, as soon as this was announced, I ran my analysis and I selected certain books for the signing event. And the website submission form had the signing fee at $80 and I was able to process it for $80. Now, I think probably once my credit card is actually charged, they're probably gonna go ahead and charge the $90, but just kind of understand that if you say, see some discrepancy between 90 and $80, and I actually contacted CGC because as you can see, the remark amount here is $130, and I think it was something like 280 or something ridiculous in the system. So they had their, prices kind of messed up. So that's another thing I would uh, maybe offer up as advice is when you read the announcement, there's going to be some pricing options 
when you go to submit it, make sure that that matches their blog post, their announcement, because sometimes uh, the costs involved may not match. So we've got the $90, which is this a standard uh, creator signature, and then $130 for the remark. Now, if you do want to get these pressed by uh, CGC via CCS pressing, or I guess it's called CGC pressing now, not CCS, it is uh, $20 per item. That is optional. When I submitted my books for the McFarlane signature series, I did opt for pressing. Uh, with these books, I feel like they're already 9.8 candidates, so I'm not going to bother with having them pressed. They're thicker, they're ultra glossy. Frankly, I just don't trust anybody to press these. I'm like, if they're not 9.8 candidates, I don't want to send them in, was basically my mentality. Instead of trying to send all of them in, pay for all of this, pay for pressing, and have the book come back in a 9.2, I'm just not interested. Uh, so there's some additional information around the submission that you can check out if you go to CGC. I'm sure if you've submitted books, um, you kind of understand the process here. Uh, it does specifically talk about how, um, you know, it's comics or magazines, uh, understanding that the last Ronin is considered a magazine, and so you'll have to do that. But uh, those are the details that they include in every signature series announcement. And once Eastman was announced, it got me intrigued because I can finally get these giant oversized Last Ronin books uh, out of my state-of-the-art comic book storage facility where I have difficulty storing these. And when I say difficulty, they typically just stand up upright on some shelf somewhere. I don't really, I, I can store them in like slab bins or bins specifically built and designed for storing CGC slabs, but I'm like the slabs would fall on them. And I, I don't know, I, I would get too worried. But so these books, I would move from place to place. So I talked about the cost of storage. That was another reason why I wanted to participate was also just trying to get these out of my possession get them over to CGC, let them sit for a while, let Eastman sign and potentially remark some of these and then return them as, as slabbed books, which then they'll be even more oversized and I'll have to deal with it, but I figure um, I, I, can, I can work with that. Uh, now, let's get to the analysis. I think that's what we're most interested in. And here is the worksheet that I came up with. Uh, what I ended up doing is um, I've got a column here that this uniquely identifies the books from my uh, my comic book collection ledger spreadsheet, and then it grabs additional detail in terms of the books that I'm uh, considering sending in. Uh, the only thing that I think, just to make note of, the, the very first one, uh, line 2, ID uh, 2059, that was the last Ronin number 1 New York Comic-Con exclusive where I ordered two directly from IDW and one of them I remember specifically just had some minor corner folding or just slight dog earring and I just realized I didn't really want it and ended up just selling that raw on eBay. So it is here in the list. I just added it because I wanted to see all of the last Ronin books that I had from late 2020 and early 2021 regardless of whether I was going to send them in or not. I just wanted to see my entire inventory. So these are all of the Ninja Turtles last Ronin issues that I have picked up. And you can just see more details here. Here, column F, the issue, uh, the release year, whether it's a variant. You can see I bought some late printings, the retailer incentives, the date of when I specifically made the purchase, how much the book cost, and then if I pre-screened them, what grade did I give them? And you can see that NYCC exclusive, I graded the one a 9.4 and the other one a 9.8 and so on. Uh, and then what I did typically, you'll see this in my unboxing videos, I have a column where I'm just comparing the raw fair market value of the book and then also does the book have value graded by CGC. Now, the graded value is interesting to me in general, but in this case, it's a signature series book and I don't track the values of, of signature series books because there's a lot of variables that go into determining the value, like I mentioned before, signature placement, how many signatures. And for most of the websites that have value, I'd say GPA is probably the most detailed where it actually breaks out the specific book and who signed it, uh, and even breaks out the difference between a signature and a remark. And that was helpful in determining value. And I ended up using GPA to determine the remark value. But then if you look at a resource like CoverPrice or GoCollect, it just lists signature series 9.8. I, I, 
it became difficult. So I don't really track that. I'm not getting a lot of books signed, so it's not worth it to me to really go through and build the kind of value analysis that I would typically do just because, like I said, there's just too many variables. So what I ended up doing was creating a lot of this information by hand. So scrolling left to right, I've got the signer information, it's all Eastman. And then what I did is I broke down the cost. So the signature, you see here, I have $80. Um, I'll see if I can adjust it to 90 once I'm moving through the analysis here. And then the remark is 130. And then should I get it pressed? I had, you know, 90 plus 20 for 110. And then the remarks 130 plus 20 at 150. I ended up not really doing anything with these two columns. So I'm going to go ahead and hide them just because I, I had realized I'm not going to deal with getting those books pressed. Uh, so what I ended up doing was I figured out, are there last Ronin issues that are worthy of a signature? And then are there last Ronin issues that are worthy of the remark? And what I ended up finding was that even in a money back sort of situation, it was worth it to send all of the books in for signature. So much so that when it's all said and done, I could stand to add over $300 of value to my collection if I sent in more of the, the later issues. So basically there's Last Ronin uh, number one, and then there's some of the later printings or issues two, three, and four. So the late printing and uh, specifically the second print and then issue to the standard plus the retailer incentive. Uh, and this is kind of what I was doing. I ordered one cover A and one of the 10 copy incentive for each of the issues two, three, and four. And for all of those, I'm going to be submitting those for the Eastman signature because like I said, uh, even in a worst case scenario, um, the retailer incentive issue two here on line 10 that I have highlighted, the value add after the cost of acquiring the book and sending it in for signing and shipping, I still have a positive value add. So the point was, if I saw anything above zero in column W, I would send that book in for signing. When I evaluated these for the remark, they became negative values and it's pretty easy math. It's an additional $40 for the remark. So you could see here that Issue two RI, issue three RI, and issue four cover A, as well as issue three cover A, it's under $40 of value being added. And so I didn't want to, to mess with the remark. Now, the other thing is I don't wanna buy remarks just left and right, it is quite costly. So I did also look at the aesthetics of the book and kind of the visuals and figure out like, is this something I really need an Eastman remark on? Or do I just want to target the books where it makes sense? Now you could certainly argue that issue one, the second print, maybe should get a remark just because it has the potential of $85 of value. It's just simple math at this point where then you're knocking it down to a $45 ad, which is still very cool and very positive. Same for issue two, cover A, uh, and that's over $100. But I had to kind of just draw the line somewhere and ended up selecting just these books for signature, which has a lot of positive value of over $300 for these seven issues of Last Ronin. Now, except for the 9.4 of the NYCC convention exclusive, the ones that are missing are the ones that I identified would be more interesting to get the remark. So here is the remark analysis, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the Last Ronin, number one, the other NYCC exclusive, it currently has a CGC signature series remark value specifically provided by GPA where it's just that book, just with an Eastman signature and remark. And I concluded the value based on the GPA data to be about $400. My total cost after acquiring the book and going through the entire process end to end is about $160. So I'm adding a $240 and 41 cent value add. Now, the other thing too, I am assuming these get nine, 9 9.8. I'm not doing a pre-screen. I'm just sending them in. I'm just shooting my shot. Hopefully I get the 9.8s and all is good there. So I'm not factoring in risk at this point. I'm just sending the books in. And then I have three copies of Last Ronin, number one, the cover A, specifically again, with an Eastman Turtle Remark, over $300 a piece, it cost me about $160 to acquire each one, plus go through this, this Remark signature submission process and adding about $150. 
And then now this one, again, it's like, uh, are we strictly making value driven decisions here? Or are we just kind of doing whatever? Um, I made one executive decision that the third printing of issue number one was going to get the remark specifically because Eastman did the cover for that. And there are tons of covers, like Last Ronin number one, there must be like 70 variants for that, plus the late printings, plus the retail. I mean, there's just so many different exclusives and variants for this. But he specifically drew the cover for issue one, the third print. So I think that that's going to be even super cool uh, uh, to see that hopefully in a 9.8 with his signature. I'm actually getting hyped talking about it because I, I think it's going to work out really well. Of course, I'm excited about the values, but I, I can picture an Eastman drawn cover with a turtle remark and his signature. I, I think that the value of that will be worth much more than $175 once all of that's said and done. But I still had to run the numbers, and luckily it's a $30 positive value add for that. And for those five books, I calculate adding almost $720 of value into my collection, ultimately with a final value add of the signatures plus the signature and remark books with a total value add of $869.66. So in this case, having run all the numbers and having looked at all of the data, I would say, yeah, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Uh, I, I, there are some that are borderline, where it's, again, it's like that 5 to 10 $12 value add. And I think those are the examples where I would try to find that book that maybe someone had, you know, ran that through that original last Ronin signing event and see if you can find it for around fair market value. Because to me, it might be worthwhile to acquire that book already slapped. I am going to be just a little bit of a hypocrite and submit all of these books. <laughs> and I just want to, I, I have my own reasons as insane as they are. A big driver for me is the storage. <laughs> I'm I'm really actually just tired of, of dealing with the storage of these books, as I mentioned, like storing them upright. And I know that's crazy, but I'm okay with that reasoning to justify me sending all of these off. But specifically, some of the, like issue three retailer incentive, uh, those books that had, like I said, that when it was all said and done, you're dealing with a, a $3.28 value add for uh, issue two of Last Ronin that, that 10 copy retailer incentive. If you really wanted that book with Eastman's signature, that might be one that you just find online for somewhere between 90 and $125, already slabbed in a 9.8, and take that and add it to your collection. If you were going to participate in this signing event, or if for some reason you wanted to have that book, I think all of that's fair, and you kind of have to do that and kind of work backwards when you're looking online or in person at some of these signed books, you have to really take into consideration not just the cost of the signing fee, but everything else that comes along with it. All of the stress and the worry, the cost of storage, window bags, thicker backing boards, shipping, the risk of leaving them upright and having them fall over and all of that, it's probably just more worthwhile in some cases to go ahead and get the book already slabbed. And then in other cases where you've got the better exclusive, the better incentive, the more rare limited edition, or in the case of Last Ronin, cover A. When in doubt, definitely look at cover A when there's so many covers and exclusives, and, and this certainly fits that case. But ultimately, the conclusion that this analysis drew me towards is try to reserve your signature series submission books to only the very best books. As much as you would love to get your favorite creator and have them sign any of your comic books, you're better off finding when they're going to be at a show, presenting the comics to them, and just letting them sign it, and then you have that in your possession. Going through this CGC submission process in today's market, it should really, really be reserved for those specific keys, the very best covers, those issue number ones, because it's all about spending your money as intelligently as possible so that you can not necessarily maximize the value of your collection, but maximize your enjoyment of the hobby. Thanks for watching, happy collecting, and see you next time.